Hi, YouTube. Welcome back to Endgame Studies with me. Um, today we're going to be looking at arguably the most famous king and pawn study in existence. Now, it's also my favorite position to show people who hate endgames, think endgames are boring, who don't want to study endgames, or just avoid endgames in their actual games because they know so little about it, but they don't know where to start. So we start with this position called the ready position or ready's position, and it's a very well-known study. However, I saw it for the first time maybe six months ago, and it really just woke something up in me because it just kind of blew my mind. So, if you're an experienced player, you probably take one look at this and say black is winning. Now, this makes sense because we take the square of the pawn, the h pawn, it is a pass pawn, and we draw a diagonal line to the last rank, we draw another line upwards until we hit the same row the pawn is on, and then we connect, and then we connect the other corner. This is the square of the pawn. Now, if your opponent's king is inside the square of the pawn, or can step into the square of the pawn on their move, they can catch your pawn. And you'll need king help in order to promote that pawn. So it looks like that black pawn is unstoppable. What's the problem? And to make matters worse, we have a passed pawn, but if we draw the square of the pawn for our pawn, black is already inside of it. So there's nothing we can do. If we push pawn, he goes in and he takes our queen. But if we try to go after black's pawn, we just chase it forever, but then he promotes. So what's the deal? As our friend Jerry Seinfeld would say. Um, well, what if we can be a little creative here and move our king closer to this pawn? And with king help, because we need king help to promote a pawn where our opponent's king is in the square. Um, what if we do this? But black will push, and when we go king f7, black will go king b6. And if we try to get any closer, it'll take our pawn. What's what's the problem? We're still outside of the square. So what what's happening? How is this how is this not an easy win for black? Now some some other things to note about this position when trying to solve it. Um, some interesting things. We don't ever want to push this pawn unless it's already being supported by the king, because the promotion square isn't accessible to the black king by a direct route because of the pawn. So I will have to take a more indirect route to get there. So I have to move on two squares rather than one to get to the c8 square. So that's something interesting to note. And, and number two, if we get our king to d7, we promote with check. So these are two things to take note of. Now, pause the video here. Do your best to solve this. Not a big deal if you can't. It's a very new uh, idea to a lot of you, I'm sure. But if you just want to follow along and learn, that's fine. We're going to look at the answer right now. So the answer is king g7. And we did look at this move before, but the follow-up is important. So the idea behind king g7 is we are too slow to go after the h pawn, and we are too slow to go after the c pawn. But if we can combine these two ideas, why not do it? And when we're down two, we're down two tempi, on that pawn from getting into the square. We can gain those back, then maybe we can step into the square. So what we're doing is we're doing forcing things, we're doing more than one thing at once. Very important in the end game. So here if black continues to push the h pawn, we go king f6, and we're moving along this diagonal. And the point, again, we've moved up towards this pawn, but we've also moved sideways to the c6 pawn, but more importantly, the d7 square, more important. So now black continues to push the pawn. He doesn't know what you're doing. Why why are you why are you still playing? Why haven't you resigned? So here, white to play. He can try and solve this position again if you didn't get it the first time. And the answer is there's two answers, king e6 or king e7. The idea, just be looking at the d7 square, that's what's important. Because now after h2, we can go c7, and now in the first scenario, if we ever push to c7, black would step into the little tiny square, and we can't promote because he takes us. But here, we are in time to play king d7, and black promotes, but we promote with check. So this is a draw. So we would catch up in that scenario. Okay, so what if king b6 here, after king f6? He's stepping towards our pawn, we can't go e6, e7, be like in the previous position because then he'll just take our, our pawn and we're outside of the square. This is a loss. So white to play here, pause the video if you need to. If not, the answer is king e5, bam. And once again, we are moving closer to the square. Less, we're less focused on the pawn itself, but more the actual square, moving closer to the square. So now if he takes our pawn, we are in time to step into the square finally. 
And Black's King is so far away, it won't matter. He can't help his pawn promote. So it will end like this, something like this, and it will be a draw. So we can't take our pawn. What if he pushes h3? Because he's still pretty close to promoting. But now there's king d6. And after h2, c7. Granted, we're not promoting with check. But it doesn't matter. Black can check us as much as he wants. As long as we don't play something like king e6 and lose our queen, we'll be fine. Just stay off of that diagonal. And you'll want to force the queens off if you want. You know, if not, you could just play the queen ending forever. <laughs> like, you're going to get this position. Um, now... If black plays king b7 in this position, stepping into the square of the pawn, again, it doesn't matter because we step onto d7, and we've seen this position a few times before now where we promote with check and it's a draw. Now back to the, re the first position with king g7, if black plays king b6 right away, maybe, instead of waiting for us to come to f6, we still go to f6 and we are still inside the square of the pawn. And there's a bunch of variations like this, but as long as you found the idea of moving along the diagonal to be pretty much two places at once, because if we count, to get to this square, it's the same amount of moves to go one, two, three, four, five, as it is to go one, two, three, four, five. And by get to that square, I meant touching it. It would be six to actually land on the square for each. So that's a very interesting thing. So this maybe will help you understand why the center is so important in chess, even in the end game. But um, I hope I explained this well. I really like this position. If I left anything out, sorry, usually do this with a student and walk them through it. So if they have questions, I answer it right then and there. So if you have questions, you can let me know in the comments and I'll, and I'll answer it. If not, let me know if you want to keep seeing endgame stuff, endgame studies, basic endgame principles. If you would like even more basic endgames, I can do that and explain more concepts like the square of the pawn and very beginner opening things. If not, um, thanks for watching, and you can join my Discord if you would like to get updates on my Twitch channel, the YouTube channel, things like that. We can- we post about our over-the-board tournaments there. It's, uh, post dog pictures, you know, it's fun. And other than that, I will see you later, and I think, Merry Christmas, I think, if this is going up then. Anyway, bye-bye! <laughs>